Today we're talking about what you need to do to rent your first apartment. I'll give you all the steps you need to follow if you've never done this before. Welcome to Explainomics from MarketWatch, where we explain everything around the intersection of business, finance, and everyday life. The first thing you need to do is make a budget. Financial experts recommend that you don't spend more than 30% of your gross monthly income on rent. Gross means before taxes. It's what you signed at your offer letter. It's not what you see on your paycheck every month. And that's for two reasons. First, the landlord will likely not even consider you if you don't make enough for this apartment. Most landlords require that tenants make at least 40 times the monthly rent. If you don't make that money, they won't even consider your application. And secondly, even if they do consider you, it's really not good for you because you need to save money for other things, you know, all the needs and wants that we have, plus an emergency fund. You need to set aside enough for a three to six month emergency fund. What happens if you don't make enough money for the apartment? The first step is to just go somewhere else. But let's say you really want that place. What else can you do? You can get a roommate. That will lower your rent and will also create some fun times that you'll remember for the rest of your life. And the third option, if you're not able to find a roommate and you really need to rent in this particular area is to get a guarantor. Remember how we said that tenants need to make 40 times the monthly rent? Well, guarantors need to make 80 times the monthly rent. Because think about it, the guarantor has their own place and they'll have to pay for your place if you stop making rent payments. So that person needs to be, well, rich. And a landlord will not consider a guarantor if they don't make enough money. So you need to think wisely about the rich people in your life that are willing to do that for you. The next step is to find out your credit score and be ready to tell your landlord what that number is. Now let's make something clear. Renting an apartment is not getting credit in the narrow sense of the word. Credit means getting a loan, like an auto loan or a mortgage. That's not what renting is. But a credit score and credit history is an indication of how credit worthy you are. Meaning, are you the person that pays their bills on time every single month? Or should the landlord be concerned that you will default on your payments? That's what the credit score is gonna tell them. Most landlords will want your credit score to be in the good category. That's between 670 and 739. However, it's all anecdotal, and at the end of the day, every landlord can make up their own rules, and it depends who you're competing against and what their credit scores are. What if you don't have a good credit score? You still have options. First, you could get a guarantor, someone with a high credit score and a strong income. That will boost your appeal as a tenant. Another thing you could do is boost your security deposit. That's money you pay up front to show the landlord, hey, I have the cash, I am going to pay you, even though my credit score is not that high. Another thing you could do is show them that you either make a lot of money or have a lot of cash lying around, even if your credit score is not great. And that's great for people who maybe had a tough time, maybe lost money in the past and weren't as good with paying their bills and that hurt their credit score, but are doing great now. They make good money, they have a strong income, a good job, and you can tell your story to the landlord. You can say, this is what happened in the past that led to my bad credit score, but here's my situation now. I make good money now, I have a lot of cash, and I can prove it to you. Which brings me to my next point. You have to provide proof, and that's tons and tons of documents that show the landlord that your story is actually truthful. Think of employment verification letters, pay stubs, W-2s, tax returns, and of course, bank statements that prove the cash that you have on hand. The last thing you need to do is get tenants insurance. Many landlords actually require it, but even if they don't, it's good for you and it boosts your profile as a tenant. Tenants insurance protects your belongings from fire or theft or other destruction, but more importantly, it protects you from the liability if you accidentally damage something that belongs to the landlord, and I'm not talking about small things, I'm talking you left the water on too long and the apartment flooded, you could be facing tens of thousands of dollars of liability. Renters or tenants insurance protects you from that. So to sum up, make a budget, find out your credit score and provide lots of proof that you are indeed a credit worthy tenant that will make all payments on time and has tenants insurance to cover for the unexpected. 
you'll be getting your first apartment in no time. For more videos from MarketWatch and Explainomics, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and keep visiting the Explainomics playlist. I'll see you next time.